Hello and welcome to the Participation Compass online tutorial. I'm Edward Anderson and I'm the Deputy Director of Involve and I'm very pleased to take you through the various functions that you'll find on the Participation Compass. Participation Compass is a site which helps you to understand participation better and to understand which, me which methods to use. And this tutorial will provide you with an overview of the site, its features and instructions about how you can get more involved. As you can see, the site is categorized into six main sections. Before we go through these, it's worth introducing the site's comprehensive search tool to help you sift through the material. So you've got cases, methods, library, experts, news, and about. But we'll start here with the filter content, which is our search tool. So if you're considering engaging with citizens, it's important that you adapt the appropriate method, which depends on your circumstances. As well as helping you to identify a suitable method, the search tool we're in right now will also highlight case studies that relate to what you've described, so you can read about similar approaches in previous situations and learn from them. And it'll also flag up any news materials, written resources, or experts that relate to your search. So it's a very comprehensive tool for finding out material which may be of interest to you. So, the information boxes on the right will help you out if you're unsure about what the question is referring to or if you want to uh, know why it matters. On the right you've got questions, the common questions about participation and if you click those you'll get further information to help you make a decision. So in this case, let's have a quick look and um, at a search tool. If we're looking to build the skills and capacity of our participants, what you can see is immediately the cases and methods have uh, adjusted. So without it we had uh, 49 methods available, um, but only 27 of those are suitable for building skills and capacity of participants. If we also want to generate new ideas, then we're down to 21 uh, methods. Um, we can also adjust the amount of money that we have available for the process, which again will um, affect the methods available to us. So th this is a very useful search tool, very comprehensive. But let's go back and start again and look at the various parts of the site. Let's look at the cases, for example. If you look at cases, you will find a list of case studies ranging uh, from all areas, ranging from very small community initiatives to large central government uh, processes, ranging from health issues, science issues, crime and policing, and those which involved a small number of people to those that involved thousands upon thousands and thousands of people. These are all methods and case these are all case studies which show methods of participation bringing citizens and stakeholders into decisions or services. By clicking on a case study, you can actually look at the background information. We can see information about when it happened, is it still ongoing, what's the background, its aims, the process used, and any results. There's also more information and contact details for many of these um, projects. This, so the cases are a tremendously powerful tool for finding out what's happened before and also give you access to people to, to talk about their experiences. The next section, which is also very useful, is methods section. Now there's a tremendous amount of participatory methods out there. It can be a very bewildering field, but the methods section um, helps you navigate it. It has a very similar layout to the case study section, but it's divided into three subheadings, your participation methods, moderation methods, and online tools. Just click on one to reveal its content. And on clicking on a method, in this case, let's look at a local issues forum, you will see a detailed account of its features, description of it, what, who the participants, um, costs, appropriate time required, strengths and weaknesses. And it provides you with a lot of information about when to use a particular method and what distinguishes it from other similar methods. We go back to the main page and then look at the third area, which is the library. This again is also divided into three headings, which are guidelines, studies and websites. And the guidelines section contains publications, either available to download or view online at no cost from a wide range of organizations. Um, all of these publications outline best practice guidelines, guidance or um, 
either to do with methods more broadly or with particular methods. So in one case, for example, we can look at, there's a health study here, which is more broad. There is also, there are also other methods to do, say, with deliberative mapping or crowdwise, which are particular methods. If we then look at the study section, this is a more academic section and it contains theoretical work or research. That was a good place to start if you feel need to look at the evidence base for participation. And finally, the websites section contains external resources that are useful for those interested in participation and engagement. Going back to the beginning, we will now look at the news section. In the news section, you will find um, commentary from involved staff on developments within participation and information about forthcoming events that may be of interest. In the experts section, you find, you find a list of organizations that are doing interesting work in the field of engagement and participation, and it gives you links to their sites. So a very useful resource for finding out what's going on and who's doing work in the field. So as you may have noticed, in each section there is an add option, which is here on the right, marked in yellow. Now this is because in the spirit of participation, we want to make sure that you are involved, you can be involved in the development of the site and its content. If you feel you have something to contribute, whether it's a new method, a publication you've read, or a case study where you want to share your experiences of practicing engagement, then please register as a user by clicking on login on the upper right hand corner and then registering and then click add and we will um, review what you, you send in and we're hoping to get a lot of people contributing their experiences and further enhancing the site. Finally, we have the About section, which is a useful place to start. It tells you how to use the site, it gives you some background information about participation, um, and it really summarizes what's in this, this video. So thank you very much for taking ti the time to visit the Participation Compass and for watching this tutorial. We hope the site will be of great use to you or your organization. Many organizations across the world are looking at how to be best involve citizens and stakeholders in their work. It's a fruitful but also very complicated field, and we hope that the Participation Compass will help provide you with answers that you need. If you have any thoughts on the website, that you'd like to share, please feel free to get in touch with us via the feedback icon. Many thanks.